locks and dams 52 and 53 are at the hub of America's inland waterway system. They are located on the Laurel Ohio River between the confluence with the Mississippi River at Carroll, Illinois and the Tennessee and Cumberland Rivers near Paducah, Kentucky. They are the two highest tonnage locks and dams in the inland waterway system. This aerial view of Locks and Dam 52 illustrates the primary features. The original construction was completed in the 1920s, consisting of the dam and the 600-foot lock chamber. During the 1960s, a temporary 1,200-foot chamber was constructed at Lock 52, with a similar temp temporary chamber constructed at Lock 53 during the 1970s. The wicket dam consists of a navigable pass and a weir made up of movable timber wickets which are raised and lowered by use of a steam-powered maneuver boat, also built in the 1920s. The three bear traps provide a limited means of regulating river flow by remote control, and a fixed concrete weir completes the dam. Locks 52 and 53 will be replaced by the Olmstead Locks and Dam project. However, many repairs are needed now to keep these locks operating reliably over the next eight years. The temporary main or 1200 foot chamber is constructed of sheet pile cells. Corrosion, wear, and barge impacts have caused many of these cells to deteriorate and now threaten the integrity of the lock chamber. These sheet pile sections in the filling flume graphically illustrate the problems in the temporary chambers. Several cells have split open in recent years, losing fill material and closing the lock until emergency repairs were completed. Without preventive repairs, these failures will become more frequent and severe. The filling and emptying valves have also deteriorated and require additional repairs. In the original 600-foot chamber, deteriorating concrete and corroded metal components are an ongoing problem which continually gets worse despite repair efforts. The wicket section of the dam at 52 consists of 487 timber wickets each four feet wide, which are raised and lowered by a crew operating the steam-powered maneuver boat. This work is physically difficult and potentially dangerous, and must be done in all kinds of weather, from sub-zero to temperatures over 100 degrees. All wicket repairs must be made using a shutter box, which is placed on the dam to allow the removal and repair of two wickets at a time. Divers work behind this box, repairing the cast iron components that anchor the wicket frames to the dam sill and replacing worn and damaged wicket assemblies. Keeping up with wicket repairs is difficult. The large number of wickets and the short period of favorable river conditions each year make this an ongoing challenge. Many wickets are severely deteriorated by the time they are replaced. The three bear trap weirs provide a limited means of regulating river flow without the need to raise and lower sections of the wicket dam. The bear traps can be operated remotely from the operations building by manipulating numerous filling and emptying valves located in the concrete piers. This causes the leaves to be raised and lowered using the head pressure across the dam. The biggest problem is corrosion of the downstream leaves, causing them to leak and be less able to rise when needed. These holes are formed by corrosion combined with the abrasion of sand and gravel that is carried across them by the river currents when they are in the lowered position on the river bottom. As these holes continue to develop, it is becoming more difficult to raise the bear traps. Failure to raise one or more bear traps could result in loss of the navigation pool. Lock and Dam 53 is nearly identical to Lock and Dam 52 except that it has no operating bear traps. In 2002, this section of concrete guide wall started to fall toward the lock approach due to failure of the timber pilings that form its foundation. It was temporarily stabilized. In summary, for the past 75 years, locks and dams 52 and 53 have served this nation well under even the most extreme conditions. Locks and dams 52 and 53 are critical to the inland waterway system and need to be kept in reliable operating condition until the time the Olmstead project is fully operational. These structures are showing their age and the result of hard service. 
they still need a high level of maintenance and repair effort in order to remain reliable for another 10 years.